Happy week seven, people. I think it's week seven. Pretty sure, anyway. Um, uh, last Friday, you were supposed to watch a couple videos and respond to some simple questions. I'm making this film on Monday, but I'm hoping you got the main point of those couple videos. So, fingers crossed. Anyway, the big takeaway. Moving charges create magnetic fields. Most people don't know that, but a moving charge does create a magnetic field. This was first discovered by uh, actually a scientist, Orsted was his last name. He was studying electricity and he happened to have a compass near a wire. And every time there was current flowing in the wire, the compass needle would change its direction. And that was how it was first discovered, actually. So of the two videos, you were supposed to take away a couple things. Number one, straight wires create circular magnetic fields around them. So hopefully you wrote your answer as circular for that one question. Loops or coiled wires create straight magnetic fields. And that's and you want to focus on the fact that that straight magnetic field was inside the coil. And it's also known as a solenoid. So basically, that was the whole takeaway, that you can create a magnetic field with a moving charge. Naturally, we have two right-hand rules, one for each, one for the straight wire and one for the coiled wire. So here we go. So the right-hand rule for a straight wire is uh, actually just two parts of your hand. The palm is not involved in this one. There's no force. So basically, you want to pretend like you're holding a glass, but your thumb is pointing towards the top of the glass. I don't know. Best thing to think of. So your fingers are slightly curled in like a half circle shape or a quarter circle, whatever, circular shape. Your thumb represents the direction of the current. Your thumb should be straight and 90 degrees to your fingers and your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. Here is a pretty lame animation of what that would look like, but it does a good job. So here you go. And now we have to do the right-hand rule for a coiled wire. So using the same hand shape where your thumb was straight and your fingers kind of turned in the direction of the magnetic field around your thumb, in this case, it's a coiled wire. So which part of your hand appears to be coiled wires? Your straight thumb or the multiple fingers you have that curl? So hopefully you're thinking it's fingers. Plus, it's written right here. So your fingers actually curl in the direction of the current, and then your thumb, which should be straight, points in the direction of the magnetic field inside the coil. So I want to stress this, that one of these is for a straight wire, and one of them is for a coiled wire. And yes, the operation of your fingers and thumbs are opposite. They stand for different things, but it kind of makes sense. Your thumb is a straight wire. Your fingers are coiled wires. So here's a quick animation before we move to some practice for what that right-hand rule for a coiled wire would look like. All right, everybody. So now we've gone over what to do with our hand, and it's time to do a couple practices. Now, what I wanted to do if we were in school is I would have actually had a wire like in the video coming out of a piece of uh, plexiglass and I would have put compasses around and then asked you to predict the direction of the arrows around that wire. So here we have a straight wire, but it's facing this way with a current coming out of the board. Remember that your thumb is the direction of the current. Thumb is very straight. It's like a straight wire and your fingers curl around that wire. So take a quick guess, if you would, as the direction of the magnetic field around this straight wire with, with the current coming out of the board. Again, your thumb should go out of the board. Which way are your fingers going? Yeah, they should be going counterclockwise. So current is out of the board. My fingers are going around this way. So if we were doing this in class, you would have actually seen all these compass needles start to make a counterclockwise circle. And something to notice is that the arrows would always be perpendicular, not my best arrow up here, 
it would always be perpendicular to the radius of the circle. So notice that this is 90 degrees and 90 degrees. So let's try another one. Here we have a wire, it's like this, we're viewing it this way with current going into the board. Which way is the magnetic field around that wire? Remember your thumb, straight, direction of the magnetic field, and I'm sorry, direction of the current, and your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So which way are your fingers curling in this example? Yeah, hopefully you said clockwise. Thumb goes into the screen or into the board here, and your fingers curl around. So it creates a circular magnetic field that is clockwise around here. Now, sometimes they wanna know what is the field at a specific location. So if I were to draw a dot like right here at location A, what is the direction of the field? Or over here, what is the direction of the field at location B? So what I was hinting at up here is that the field at a location is always 90 degrees to the radius. So we've already figured out that it's a clockwise current, sorry, clockwise field around this current carrying wire. So if you're unsure, just draw from the center of the wire out and then go 90 degrees to that because it's clockwise. So at this location, it's tangent to the curve. We said that so many times this year. If we wanna know location B, draw a radius out and then go 90 degrees to that radius. And that's the direction of the magnetic field at that location. Again, it's clockwise. That's how I know it's going to the right here and then down and to the left there. All right, let's turn that wire from this to this. And can you tell me, no, you can't because it's a video, but can you figure out for yourself the direction of the magnetic field in this region, region above the wire and this region below? Again, your thumb is the direction of the current and your fingers should curl in the direction of the field. So I'm giving you a second to do that. And remember, it's gotta be circular. So right now your hand should be going like this and your fingers should be going around that way which means up here in this region, your fingers are going into the board. They're, they're going in, they're not going down. If you're going down, you're doing this with your hand. Don't squeeze your hand. It's, it's like you're holding a drink in your hand. Keep your fingers like a circle. So up here, the field is into the board, which means below it, it has to be out of. Remember the field is circular. If this is your wire, it's going into the, the field is going into, out of into, out of. So it creates a circular magnetic field. So we can actually quantify this. And normally I would show you this with a quick demo, but I don't have the equipment. So I was wondering if you could stop for a video for a second and just contemplate what might change the strength of this magnetic field around a wire. I don't know if you paused it or not, or you're waiting for me, but you should have paused it. Hopefully you thought, hey, you know what? Maybe if there's more current, there might be a stronger field. Good guess. And hopefully maybe you also picked up on the fact that if you're farther away, that the field may not be as strong, right? Just like gravity, you get farther from the earth, gravity is weaker, more mass, more gravity, something like that. So the equation turns out to be this. Mu naught, yeah, it's another mu, I over two pi R. This is really a substitute and solve kind of problem, and we're gonna keep it like that considering the current conditions of the way we are learning. But you're probably asking yourself, what is mu naught? Mu naught is a fundamental constant. It is four pi times 10 to the negative seven Tesla meter per amp. Those are the units, it's a constant. And, and the equation should make sense. This is the magnetic field strength, some distance from a current carrying wire. That's all this is. So we're gonna do a quick example with this. All right, so we're gonna do an example here where we combined the right-hand rule, the math that goes with the right-hand rule for a straight wire, and the right hand, uh, and the math that goes with um, the force of a magnetic field on a wire. We're gonna combine a lot of stuff together in one problem, so it should be fun. Anyway, here we have a wire, 
and the current is flowing towards the top of my screen here. First question, what does the field look like on the right side of the wire and the left side of the wire? So use your hand, your thumb should be the direction of the current, your fingers should be curling in the direction of the magnetic field, and what you should get is that the field to the right of the wire should be into the board, sorry, have it into the screen, and on the left side, it would be out of. So that's step one. And now let's just do some funky math. Let's say that the current is 50 amps, and we wanna know what is the magnetic field strength four centimeters from the wire. So I'm gonna put a point here four centimeters away. Let's say that this is four centimeters, four centimeters. What is the magnetic field strength at that location caused by the 50 amps running through the wire? So we just got this new fancy equation where it was B equals mu naught I over two pi R. Subbing in some numbers here, nothing too crazy. We can find the magnetic field strength. Remember this is four pi times 10 to negative seven Tesla meter per amp. The current is 50 amps over two pi times the distance, which is 0 0.04 meters. Some of you may notice that the 4 pi and the 2 pi do divide out, and you actually just end up with 2 times 10 to the negative 7. But don't write it that way. The constant is a constant, and we should write it as such. So what you'll end up with is that the magnetic field strength here is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. Lovely. All right. Now we're going to make it a little more tricky. You're welcome. Let's say that we put another wire exactly at that location where four centimeters from the original wire. And we're gonna put some current in there. We'll go with some green current, if that's okay with you. That current will now flow up towards the top of the screen. And we're gonna say that there is 10 amps in that. Okay. So a few questions here. First, we know the red current creates a magnetic field here that is into the screen. But now all of a sudden we have current flowing towards the top of the screen. We know that a moving current in a magnetic field experiences a force. So this is the force of a magnetic field on a moving current. That's the first right-hand rule we learned. Take a second and try and match your hand up. We have current towards the top of the page. Thing, the, uh, the field should be going into your screen. Which way is your palm facing? And hopefully what you're getting is that your palm is facing to the left. So yes, this wire would actually be attracted to the other wire. And unfortunately, we usually do this in a little bit more detail when we're at school. And we have a demo set up. And I mean... Forces are always equal and opposite, Newton's third law. So if the red wire uh, pulls the green to the left, the green would pull the red to the right. And we would literally see two wires attracting each other if they had current flowing in the same direction. So I'm sorry we can't do that, but it's a really cool demo. Anyway, can we calculate this force? Well, let's think about that. Is it Bill or BQV? Uh, that's a dumb question. I know you know the answer to that. Bill sine theta, and sine theta is again 90 degrees. So what we want to know is the force of the magnetic field. And so what we want to be specific about here is that it's the magnetic field created by the, the red wire, that's the red X's, and then it's acting on the green current and that'll be acting on a length of wire that is also green. So I guess we should give this thing a length. What do you think? I'll give it a length. Let's say that this is 0 0.2 meters long. So just to stress this one more time, we have the red current creating the magnetic field acting on the green current in the other wire, and that wire is a length. So we're just subbing in numbers here. This isn't anything too crazy. It's not like 
brain surgery. So we have FB, we take the B from our previous part, which we calculated to be 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. That's the magnetic field created by the red current 4 centimeters from that wire. We said there's 10 amps in this wire, and the wire is a length of 0.2 meters, and we get that the force isn't much, but it's about 5 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. So that's about as in-depth as we're going to go. Again, it's a shame we can't do these demos so you can see and not just feel like you're doing math, but these things actually do happen, and magnetism is pretty cool, but it is what it is. So we'll do the best that we can with what we got. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. If you have any questions about this homework, which will definitely model what we've done here, just... So now it's time to practice the third right hand rule which is a right hand rule for a coiled wire we said that a coiled wire actually creates a straight magnetic field inside that coil so here's how it works let's pretend i have a, a few examples here this is a coiled wire it's called a solenoid and i'll put it up here solenoid we'll say that the current is going up this way and coming down that way all right so which part of your hand here looks like coiled wires you're going to keep the same shape as the right hand rule for the straight wire straight wire circular magnetic fields what if it's a coiled wire which of these looks like coiled wires your fingers so your fingers are now the current and your thumb is the field inside so hopefully you can tell from this amazing picture that the current is going up the front of this circular thing of wire. I just put the rectangle there for perspective, like usually it's wrapped around something or a piece of cardboard or a marker even. And you should curl your fingers in that direction. So I'm gonna curl my fingers up the front and down the back. Now, some people actually do that on their arms. They, they kind of use their arm for this. The current's going up the front and coming down the back, up the front, down the back. When you do this, your thumb is pointing left. That means inside this coil, there's a magnetic field that points left. It comes out, it goes around, and it comes back in. So basically what you've just created is an electromagnet. So field lines always go out the north and into the south. You've created a bar magnet basically. And after this is all done, there's gonna be a video for you to watch in case you're bored and you have a nine volt battery, some wire, uh, you can make an electromagnet at home if you'd like. So let's try another example. So this time what I've done is I put the wire to start behind and then we'll just do that there. Uh, this always reminds me of like integral signs for those that are suffering through calculus. But anyway, current. I'm going to have it go there and down here. So in this case, the current's going up this wire that's behind and coming down the front. Do that with your fingers. The current will go up the back, down the front. Some people do that over their arm, up the back, down the front. My thumb is pointing to the right. Therefore, the field inside is pointing right, which means outside it comes back around and in. Same thing here. And there you go. Now there's some math to go with this. But considering the way we are forced to learn at the moment, we are going to be skipping some stuff that's non-essential, we'll say. But what you should take away from this is that a coiled wire creates an electromagnet. Electromagnets are kind of important. So let's take this coiled wire, which we're viewing this way, and let's turn it this way. So now the coils of wire are wrapped around this, but I can only view it from this direction. So let's make the current, which is apparently green, go around this way that'll be our current and we'll do the opposite over here again there's plenty of math for this but we will skip it so now instead of going like this your fingers follow the current so the current in this picture is going clockwise your fingers which represent the current in the multiple wires should go clockwise my thumb ends up pointing into the board. So that means inside this coil, the magnetic field is into the board. Now, if it's going into the board on the inside of the coil, it's obviously gonna to have to go the opposite outside 
when you're outside the wire. I'm sorry, it goes into the board, out of the board, left, right. So out here would be out of the board. When we do this one here, I'm sure you can guess it's gonna be the opposite. Fingers curl in the direction of the current. My thumb is pointing out of the board. One more. So that's the B inside. That looks weird now. Which means outside, so it's coming out of the coil wires this way, but now it has to go back in to come back around. So all around the outside is a B. So that's the right hand rule for a coiled wire. Again, we're gonna forego the math. And what you really need to take away from this is that this is how you can create an electromagnet. Please check out that video. Maybe if you're bored, I don't know, make one. Say, like, take a video of it and show it to me. It'd be pretty cool to see what you guys can build. No pressure, I'm not asking you to do it. I'm saying if you're bored. Anyway, hope you're all well. Take care of yourselves.